Hey everybody, Aaron Blades here. It's Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. sharp. No, it's not. 9.02. Tuesday. We're two minutes late. It's Tuesday, June 9th. June 9th. June 9th. Are we set up side by side up there? Huh? Did you oh, set us up no, side just, by side? It's just you for the for the moment, but on the ah. desktop. On the oh, desktop. gotcha. So Dustin and I, uh, Dustin's going to be joining me from now on down in the corner. <laughs> so we can we can talk together. Yay. So we had a good week. Been pretty productive. Mm. Got the uh, computer. Soda water is one of the greatest substances on earth. It's Carbonated water. It's not bad. It's nice. But today, I thought uh, Dustin got some great shots over the weekend. If you want to go to the desktop, Dustin. Yeah. Dustin got some great shots over the weekend of this red-shouldered hawk, um, and I just love this this photo he got. And. Um, uh, so as a result, I think I'm going to be using this as inspiration for a little digital painting. And we figured since we're doing the uh, Birds of Prey course, this is one of the hawks that we're going to be covering. I thought, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Red-shouldered hawk. Very common uh, bird that we have here in Florida. And, um, and obviously you can see on the wings why they call it a red-shouldered hawk. Although those aren't shoulders, those are the elbows. So there you go. That's the shoulders are right up next to his his cheeks. But anyway, uh, when the bird is sitting there, uh, and the and the wings are are you know in, it looks like shoulders where they are. So that's why they call it that. Uh, but well, anyway, we'll be doing a little painting of that. I'm going to be changing the lighting up on it though. I think. So I want to show you how you can take your reference and and make it your own. That's that's the goal always. Um. This sounds <laughs> playful. What? <laughs> Nick just writing messages to me. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> but uh, we just got a great new computer. I got a new uh, Mac Pro, giant cheese grater. Yeesh. It is uh, quite the beast. Quite the beast. Yeah, we got it installed yesterday. Um, and I've had some really wonderful, uh, uh, for those of you that weren't around, I think it was Friday that I did the, where we talked about all the haters and stuff, right? Wasn't that yes. Friday? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we had a good, for those of you that weren't there, we had a good uh, uh, live stream on Friday. I uh, had some issues on social media, and I've had some really great support from everybody, so thank you for that. It's been awesome. And uh, But I'm going to leave that alone today, and we are going to draw a hawk. A hawk. A hawk. A hawk. A hawk. A hawk. And uh, let's see if I can get this. Whoa, that's way too big. And, it's quite um, a bit larger, but yeah, but um, let me do this. There we go. That's too. I mean, you know, what I'm gonna have to do Dustin. What? I'm gonna have to crop it. Oh no! Oh no! So let's crop it now because I need room for my Nick. Uh, can you explain to us a bit of uh, bird anatomy today? Yes, that is one of the reasons I'm going to be doing this image. Drawing this image. And thank you everybody oh. to... Uh, to out there who are complimenting on my photo, thank you so much. There's a suggestion that we should flip which side of the screen we're on because it looks like we're looking in opposite directions. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Why don't you do that? Mind if I uh, borrow the mouse? Borrow the mouse. There. Borrow son. the mouse. Borrow the mouse. All right. Where is where is the mouse? Is it over there still? You gotta bring it down and then over. There you go. Now bring it over. There it is. Go up. Cleaned my office yesterday. It was a mess. It's all tidy now. Very nice. I love it. There you go. All right. That should do it. That should uh, do it. Careful. No. Careful. No, we can look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's do this. Uh, I am going to do a vertical image. Come on. Come on, new document. 
I want to do a vertical image. Let's do it. Uh, yarg, yarg. That's not vertical. That's vertical. Uh, image. Which size? Let's take that down a little bit. Let's bring that down to. 12 by 16, that ought to do it, at 300 dpi. You know how corvids uh, bully birds of prey that are too close to their nests? Yes. Perhaps you could add one or two for a dramatic effect. Uh, if I have time, I don't know that I'm going to have time. We got no time. To get to the chopper. Oh, I watched, uh, chopper. I watched uh, Killing Gunter. Killing Gunter? Yeah, Killing Gu Gunter? Gu Gunter? I think it's Gunter. It's a it's a it's a mockumentary kind of thing where they they're making a documentary, but it's these killers trying to kill the best assassin in the world. And that sounds it so came familiar. Out, it's like two years ago, and uh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is is Gunther, and oh. he doesn't show up until like the last ten minutes of the movie. Oh really? It's so funny. It's really really funny. Or I thought it was funny. I need to I need to watch that. Is it on Netflix? Uh yeah. Where did I see it? I. See I think it was Netflix that I saw it. Um, also, I want to remind you guys that our website is still, we've still got a lot of stuff on sale. We've got my, my uh, animation courses still free. Uh, we've still got $1 um, uh, Photoshop brush packs. We've got $1 courses. Other courses are really cheap. So we're still, we're still doing that. Just so you know. All right, so I want I, I really love this pose of this hawk because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, diagonals going on. One of the things I love about I love using diagonals first of all, but I love this this obvious you know left to right diagonal happening, and then the bird's gaze is also diagonal. The 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 uh, the the weeds here, the I can't, I don't know what they are, but the, so the weeds that are growing up, they're diagonal. It all lends itself to giving this, you know, especially with the gaze of the of the bird itself, it gives this uh, notion of, of uh, thrust, that it's moving through the, the image. I'm going to push a couple of opposites. I want on the tail, I'm going to spread the tail and get an opposite angle, so it almost makes an X. And I think that's going to help the composition a little bit, rather than keeping it in the direction that it's going. Um, there's a couple things I want to try with this. And then also I want to mess with the lighting a little bit. But uh, yeah, I just think this is really cool. Uh, I'm going to put this back wing in a little bit more shadow and put the head in more light so the head will really pop off of uh, dark in the background, things like that. Nice. So. What well, kind of across the new animal that you, that you want to draw, uh, how do you just... How do you study it that eventually you can draw with no references? That just takes time. Um, you, if you can find it uh, in life, you know, to, to study it from life, then you do that. Um, if not, then you, I would try to Google it as much as I could. I would try to go to YouTube, find videos, because videos are probably the next best thing uh, to watch besides uh, watching something from life. Um, I would. I used to do a lot of drawing off of video um, because you get a lot more information with video. Question: YouTube question. Anything you wish you hadn't wasted time on growing up? Oh wow! Television. I wish I hadn't wasted so much time watching TV. I didn't watch a lot of TV as a kid, but the TV that I did watch, I wish I didn't. Television. 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 Why am I drawing so small? What type of videos do you watch? Or uh, did you watch? Uh, uh, any kind of natural history type video. So, you know, animal, wildlife videos. That sort of thing. Uh, 
And what Vital says, I, I started to learn how to uh, draw wolves just a while ago. It's been struggle, but some progress is uh, happening, and part of it is <coughs> thanks to you, Aaron. Keep up the great work. I'm glad. I hope that I'm, I'm hoping that you're referring to my How to Draw Wolves course. As wolves and uh, foxes? Foxes and coyote. And coyote. Coyotes. I'm bringing the tail out like so. When you draw from a video, do you pause it or do you just scribble along? I'll, so I'll pause it. Sometimes it, both. You know, sometimes I'll pause it. Sometimes I'll just scribble along. It depends. Look how long those feet can go. Uh, maybe I, I think I exaggerated a little too much. <laughs> but they can go, they still can go long. I keep forgetting that my that my camera is on right now. I'm just like, uh -huh. <laughs> what do you mean? Of uh, the whole me being on the screen too at the uh. same time. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not used to this. Just want to increase that head size a bit. Hey, how you doing, eh? Good morning. Uh, do you give any, um, or do you have any tips for drawing or painting feathers? I really find them complicated. Well, you, feathers lay in a certain pattern, so you have to understand the pattern. Um, different feathers on different parts of the body do different things, and they're there for different uh, reasons. My biggest thing is not drawing every feather, just like when you draw hair, you don't draw every strand of hair. It's laying in a pattern. It's, it's fooling the eye, basically. I want to try to fool the eye into thinking that I'm doing a lot of feathers, when in reality, I'm just throwing in some, some of the patterns that the feathers make. start doing watercolor and acrylics but not sure how to uh, not but not sure how or where to start uh, do you have any tips yeah what would you say watercolor and acrylics yeah watercolor acrylics. I've got a watercolor course on my website that teaches you how it's a it's a beginner's introduction to uh, watercolor painting and I really I not to just plug myself all the time but I do recommend it because I think it's pretty thorough. I meant I meant it for beginners and how to get you know to get you started. And um, and then I've got uh, and then acrylics. Uh, there's a lot of great resources online. I would just do a you know a little bit of a search online, and uh, you'll find stuff. There's some good stuff on YouTube. So right now, obviously, notice I'm not drawing every every feather. I'm just drawing the shapes right now that these feathers make. Hello, Aaron. Uh, when starting to learn an anatomy... <laughs> Increase that head size? Are you referring to Dustin's ego by having him on screen? <laughs> Go ahead, I'm just giving you a when um, <laughs> I almost uh, almost swore. <laughs> so it's a family joke. Are you sure about that? Uh, when starting to learn anatomy, whether human or or animal, is it better to start from full body drawing or portraits? Uh, I I think it, I don't know that it matters as long as you are hitting both. You know, that's all. Just make sure that you hit both. 
Dustin probably feels exposed. I am so exposed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this head, I'm drawing the wrong proportions. Hey, Mr. Aaron, I have a question. Uh, how do you start learning animation? What is the best setup for drawing? Well, I started learning animation. I see. I was lucky. I was I was taught by Disney animators, so there's that. But um, uh, the best setup is you know getting an animation desk, whether you build it yourself uh, or you buy one. You need a, a decent disc. A disc is you know the the thing that rotates uh, that your, your paper sits on with the pegs at the bottom having decent paper or I'm here I'm, I'm talking old school and I, I got to stop thinking about that or which most people are doing now you animate digitally and uh, there's great software out there right now there's uh, Calipeg which is a new software that's coming out uh, that's come out for uh, for uh, iPad is really great. My brother just did a uh, a whole course on how to use it, and um, and I would I would do that, and then also you know go online and start looking at um, animation fundamentals. I've got a, a completely free animation course on my website. I recommend looking at that. Learn from it. Learn what you can, and um, and then start applying it. Start animating. Hi there, Aaron and friends. Hi. Uh, last week, uh, you talked about how the downside to skipping art school is a lack of camaraderie between fellow students. Camaraderie. Camaraderie. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any advice for recreating that in an online community? Well, I'm thinking of starting a group where we follow uh, courses like yours as a group, with each person purchasing the course for themselves, of course. Of course. Of course. I love that idea, first of all. And um, and I think you just answered it. You know, just pull the group together, whether it's Zoom or whatever. And I think, what, I think the best thing to do is rather than work and, and be together, I would... We would, I, I would do it where you, you discuss whatever assignment you want to do and you guys go away and work in the same way that we did in college. And then you come back together and everyone show their stuff and you have discussions and, and critiques and that sort of thing. Um, I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, from the last, uh, last stream of the Tiger, when you're um, smudging up the stripes... Uh, in the fur. Yes. Uh, what what brush was that they were using? Do you remember? It's just a, a um, it's just a spotted brush. It looks like this. I, I I made it. It looks like this right here. That's, those are the patterns that it makes. So let me show you how I make it real quick because it's super easy. Uh, let me change the brush first of all. I'll show you how to make your own brush. So um, I am going to create a new small document. For some reason, it's going really slow. Oh, there we go. Make it five by five inches. Okay. So this is only five by five inches. Um, and uh, and then I'm going to add a layer. Don't want to do it on the background layer. And I'm just going to do spots. Spots. Here and there. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to turn off my background. I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to uh, go down to define brush preset and I'm going to click on that. And it's a sampled brush. We can just, let's just call that spotted. Spotted brush. Okay, and now look, I've got a spotted brush. You can see I'm moving moving it around. Let's get rid of this. Don't save. So here you can see I've got the brush on here. And if I draw, you can see it creates all those spots. Now, I can also use this brush for my smudge tool. 
So if I use it for my sledge tool, that's really cool. Using it with my sledge tool, that's really cool. Is that you can create this these really neat kind of grass or hair like streaks. You see that? Yeesh. And that's that's uh, that's a great effect. Now that's a tool. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's how you create a brush. You can and remember. You, remember, you know, your brushes aren't just for drawing and painting. You can use them as erasers, and and, and get an effect. Um, for instance, if I, uh, real quick, uh, what finishing would you use on an acrylic painting? Oh, I'm still talking. You gotta learn, man. When, I know. When to interrupt me. I know. I'm still talking. So I want to show you this. So uh, here I've got a solid color. Let's go to my eraser and let's drop down to that brush. Now, now you could, uh, with the eraser, you can create these interesting patterns too. Oops, I'm uh, probably out of, out of the uh, view on. There we go. See, so you know, your brushes are used for not just drawing and painting, but for uh, for erasing, for smudging, for all kinds of cool stuff. And once again, I'll go back to the smudge tool with the same brush, and look at the look at the patterns I can create with that. See that? Very cool. See there? So they're, they're really handy. The texture makes it almost look like powder. Yeah, exactly. All right, so there's your brush lesson real quick. Um, what? Oh, Nick says that it's not just camaraderie. It can also be connections. That's true. The reality is that I would not have necessarily ended up working with me, with Aaron, without going to without the Ringling connection, that's absolutely true. So in my case, as someone that paid their way through school, that is where I feel the value that I paid it for is. Meaning, he made great connections, and I agree with you, Nick. There's also that I wouldn't have made it at Disney had I not gone to art school, <coughs> because Disney was going to different art schools around the country. If I had tried to, you know, stay home and self-teach, I would never have had that that connection. Uh, what finishing would you use on an acrylic painting? Um, there's different types of uh, acrylic varnishes that you can get, and that's what I would use. I, I and kind of like a, I do like a semi gloss. What's the software you uh, you use while drawing this? Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop. So up here, I want to draw on the feathers. There's a certain way the feathers lay. This first feather you're going to see is kind of overlapped this way, and it's that's because of the wind. That's not how the feathers lay. They actually, this feather, the first feather that I'm drawing, is the base of it is actually underneath this feather. When you're looking at the top of the wing like this, the feathers overlap in this way. The first feather is under the second feather is under the third feather so on. Like this. And that's because when they flap that downstroke is the is the thrust, right? And so you those feathers need to be pressed together. So if they're laid out in this way, they actually push against each other. How do I make traditional sketches pop more and look better? Uh, I usually use pencil and pen. Uh, will markers help? Sure. You know, any any time you can mix up uh, mediums, yeah, you'll get you'll get some great effects. So yeah, I would definitely try it. Can you show us uh, where the bones and muscles are in in this drawing? <laughs> the Ringling connection sounds like a dating site for circus people. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, Dustin. Sorry. 
No worries. Can you show us where the bones and muscles are in this drawing? Yes, and I'm going to do that in just a second once I get these feathers in. You've got to do it now. Now. Ah. And what you're going to see here are the feathers change all of a sudden. Mr. Aaron, sir. Yeah, sure. How do you decide where the lighting will come from? I end up putting the shadows wherever I think looks good, and I know it winds, I know it winds people up sometimes. Good day. <laughs> good day, sir. I, I think about the shadow patterns and how it's going to affect the composition, and that's how I decide the lighting. Okay, so let's do a uh, let's do a little anatomy lesson here on a bird on a bird of prey. So, and I go over this in my bird of prey course. If we if we were to strip away all the feathers off of the off of a bird of prey, and it was to sit on a roost, this is what you would see. You'd see here's the head, here's a beak. Let me blow this up. So here's the head, here's the beak. That 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 um the thing that always makes them look mad. There's it's a bony ridge. It's called an orbital ridge. It's over the eye. So you have this, and then they've got this little neck comes down. Actually, comes down like this. There we go. Like so. Got a crop right here. That's where the when they eat, it all kind of sits there and gets ground up. Little body with a little tail right here where the feathers, uh, tail feathers, touch, attach, like this. They look really weird without their feathers. You've got a thigh right here. Pelvis is, the pelvis is right here, so that thigh bone connects right in there. And then, I'm going to blow it up even more for you. There we go. Oh, i, I, I got to come bring it back. Then you've got the calf, just like we have. And sometimes that, that can come down a little further. And then, you've got the feet. So, now, up here, you've got the shoulder, which the shoulder blades are way in the back, like us. Shoulders here. Here's the elbow. Comes way back. Forearm. Right there. And then, instead of fingers, They've lost most of their fingers. They've got what, like one or two digit bones, but it really it comes out like this. And so that's what you know. That's what you're looking at when, you, like, when you eat chicken wings. You're looking. That's the arm. So the the drumstick part of the chi chicken wing. That's the upper arm. And then when you have the flats, you know, on the chicken wing, that's the forearm. And it looks like that. Okay. And so when a bird spreads its wing, it's just spreading its arm. this there's the fingers forearm upper arm there's a tendon that comes across like this all right there's a bicep muscle in here all of that flexors extensors and so off of this is where all the primary feathers come off of this first part. Primary feathers are the feathers are on the first half of the wing, right here. All right? And then all of these feathers, the secondary feathers, come off to the elbow. Like that. Okay? So when the bird folds its arm up, 
that's where you get all the primaries are folded in on top of each other like this and the secondaries come down like this you got a lot of feathers that come off let me let me do a different color real quick what kind of brush is that that you're, that you're currently using this is the uh, this is my regular sketching brush that I always use uh, this is you can find this brush in my um, in my uh, brush pack, brush pack, um, my original custom brush pack. So if I if I draw him out, you'll see all of a sudden there's a lot of. I drew that head a little too big, but you'll get the idea. So that comes down. There's all these feathers that that build volume into the bird, and then off of this bit of tail, is where we get all those tail feathers coming out. And a bunch of bunch of feathers there, and then the wing is like this, coming off of the the uh, the back there, and folding up underneath like that. That's how you get that that look to the bird. <coughs> and so, you know, they, they the part that people get confused about are the legs a lot of times and the wings how those, how those are working and so when we look at this guy here if we were to peel his feathers away what we're seeing is there would be a knee right here this is thigh the thigh the knee the calf muscle coming down here's the ankle going down into the feet so here is the thigh coming down like this Here's the knee, the calf, ankle, coming down, and there's the foot right there. Okay, so if we turn that sideways, what are we seeing? So we're seeing, if we turn it sideways, his calf is reaching way down like this. Here the, the bird is coming up here and his head is up, say up here, like that. And what we're seeing is his calf coming down And this. Like that. Okay? Or if we, we could even pull it back. The calf would come down like this, or the thigh would come back like that. Calf this way. And then the feet. There's the tail. And then all that pulls right up. So when a bird is flying, when a bird is flying, here's the body and profile. The tail's here and the wings are up here flying. Okay? When the bird is flying, what you're seeing is they have the ability to bring their, their thigh way up like this. Okay? and then bend their calf this way and then their ankle like that and then the foot's here so that's how their legs are pulled up like that All right. so there's your bird anatomy 101 that is just crazy <laughs> So I've got to I got to get back to drawing. I'm getting sidetracked, man. <laughs> Justin, have you tried drawing? Uh, I used to uh, a lot growing up, all the way up to high school. Then I just kind of uh, slowed down from there, and now I don't really I haven't really drawn anything in the past couple of years now. But I do photography now. <laughs> So there's that, but yeah, I think nowadays it's all lo logo designing, things like that. Uh, Instagram comment. You were my instructor at Photoshop World in Atlanta several years ago. Oh, cool. I remember that trip. That was great. We went to the Atlanta uh, Aquarium. It was really cool. Ooh. Uh, and you were not only a great teacher, but very encouraging to me, and I just wanted to say that I appreciated that. Oh, thank you. 
Here's, here's a, a little lesson, a tiny little lesson. These feathers that come off, like, that look like they're going over the cheek, they come off the, the mouth and kind of come this way, they're not always super uh, apparent, but there is a group of feathers that look like that. Those are called the ear coverts, C-O-V-E-R-T-S, coverts. And what they're doing is they literally cover the ear. Birds have great hearing, and there is actually, right, if I could peel the feathers back, there's a little opening right here. Right there. There's a little opening right there that is the ear. Owls are so specialized that their hearing becomes three-dimensional. They can their ears are actually offset on their head so that they can and they are actually one ear is tilted up and one ear is tilted down. So they can pinpoint a sound in space. They can figure out the X, Y, and Z depth in space or axis I should say in the dark so that's why they're such great hunters along with having great eyesight silent feathers you know owls you know when you hear a bird fly you're hearing that rush of wind as it's flapping you know as it flies away owls you can't hear them they actually have feathers that have extra barbs on the barbs that break up the air in such a way that it becomes silent very interesting stuff. Very cool. Um, Aaron, do you have any tips on adding wings to creatures that don't normally have them? Uh, where should they be positioned? Like, how big should they be? Blah, blah, blah. Well, think about the weight of that animal. And, uh, and, and think about the anatomy as well. If you want it to be believable, you have to create more anatomy. Um, if it's a human and you want the arms to be like wings, then you've got to, you know, there's a lot of things that, like, there's no way, even if, if, even if we were given wings to, the, that would be big enough to carry our weight, which would have to be huge, like a 30-foot wingspan, 20-foot wingspan, um, we would never be able to use them because we don't have the musculature to flap them. That's why birds have the, have the build that they have. Um, you've heard me talk before about, uh, you know how muscles are attached. How let's say on this, you can see on this bear skull that I've got. There's this ridge right here along the top of the skull, where all the muscle attaches for the jaw, and that's what gives this bear. This is a polar bear. It's what gives this polar bear such incredible biting power. Is this ridge, and that's where all that muscle attaches to. We don't have a ridge like that on our skull. Therefore, our biting power is pretty weak. Well, birds also have a ridge, not on their skull, but on their chest, right along their sternum, okay? And that ridge comes way out like that. It's called a keel. And that's where all of their pectoral muscles attach. So they've got these huge, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't hold a candle to them. <laughs> they've got these huge muscles that attach to this big ridge that comes out of their chest. So that these muscles, literally, if it was, if you blew a bird up to my size, my chest muscles would be out to here, and all of those, your pectoral muscles are what, are what tie into your your shoulder muscles, into your arms, and that's what gives you the power to pull this way. So if I'm if I've got a weight here and I've got a weight here, and I want to pull those weights together, the muscles that I'd be using would be bicep all the way into my upper, uh, my, my forward uh, shoulder, and mostly my pectoralis muscles, those, those chest muscles, the pecs. Pecs. You, you know, pull those, that's what pulls it together. So imagine being a bird with a big wing, and you need, the, you need that thrusting power. Well, that's why they have these big muscles. So there you go. So those are the types of things, I just got completely off sidetrack. Um, but those are the types of things that you want to think about if you want to add wings to different animals that wouldn't necessarily have wings, you've got to think about that, that musculature and, and adjust the anatomy accordingly. <laughs> YouTube question, hey Aaron, are you going to do any ape and monkey tutorials? Yes, I am. I really want to see you draw a capuchin. I love those guys. Monkey. They have the best oh, yeah. expressions. They do. It's pronounced capuchin? Capuchin? Yeah, cap cap 
Capu- capuchin? Capuchin. capuchin? I'm putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, if there is a scene where two characters interact, for example, the dance of Beauty and the Beast, are the two characters animated by the same animator? Well, in that particular scene, they were. They were animated by James Baxter, who is a brilliant animator. But um, other times, it's two different animators, depending on you know, the action. Like, there is a, in the sequence that I always talk about that I animated... Um, there's a scene where Belle and Beast are arguing in front of the fireplace where she's trying to bandage him. And in that particular scene, I did Beast and Mark Hen did Belle. And we just went back and forth. It's whoever is dominant in the shot will be first. And then we just, we just keep trading the scene back and forth until it's done. How can you paint digitally, for example, like a watercolor, acrylic, painting, charcoal, um, like trying to get those kinds of brush strokes in there? Does it all come down to the type the type of brush you use? Yes. Or is there something more to it? No, it's the type of brush. You use brushes that, that give the illusion of those mediums. I happen to have, I've, I've created wet media brushes, um, and things like that on my on my website, and there's other places that are that where you can get, um, you know, charcoal brushes and oil paint brushes and all that kind of stuff. Twitch question: Hello, everyone. Any advice on using toned gray paper, <clears throat> also charcoal or graphite for it? Yeah, you can use you can use that stuff, um, but the you know my whole thing about using toned gray paper is all of, you know having the ability to go white, also it's not just darker, but you can go lighter, and it gives it more of a sculptural feel. Man, is it hot in here? Are you hot? I'm I'm okay. Man, I feel like I got a fever. The only prescription is more cowbell. There's more cowbell. I still continue with the uh, answers. Or oh yeah, I got a new. I got another question here. All right. uh, YouTube question: How's the new setup, Aaron? Well, the setup is pretty awesome. It is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Eh? Pretty uh, pretty could nice. you tell us what's inside your Mac Pro, Nick? Nick answers: a 16-core Xenon processor, 128 gigs uh, of okay. RAM, a Radeon Pro Vega 2 GPU. Yep. I don't know what any of that means. The 32 only, gigabytes only gigabytes of VRAM. It, 32 gigabytes of VRAM. It, it, Dustin knows, and Nick knows what that means. I just use it. And, and Nick wins this round. <laughs> There's currently an Apple to... Uh, versus PC. Versus PC, yeah. You and Nick are Mac, and I'm the and I'm the lone PC. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin doesn't know it, but we're forcing him over to uh, no, Mac. <laughs> no. I'm not getting a Mac. I really struggle with beats, uh, particularly the lower jaw. Yes. Uh, can you do a bit of a close up of um, the anatomy there? Yes. Can you go to just Yes, piece? got it. So here's a, a golden eagle skull, okay? One of the things that, uh, you know, obviously everyone knows about the, the maxilla. The maxilla is the, is the upper part of the beak. Uh, and that's pretty easy to understand. And this part here is called the sear, that yellow part that we always see on a bird. And then the nostril is called the nair. All right, and so that's all pretty gettable. Um, what happens is if you look underneath, we have the same kind of thing, you know, our jaw comes around and this is all soft right here. You know, where it goes up to our tongue. Same thing on a bird. Okay? Now you just have to understand how that translates when you draw it. So, once again, if we draw, and once again, this is all going to be in the uh, Birds of Prey course. So, here we got the 
beat comes uh, down like this, comes around, and we'll blow that up a little bit. Okay, you've got a hooked bill, and depending on the species of bird, you might have a, a, a extra little hook right here. It's not super pronounced on the eagles. Matter of fact, it's just kind of a, a hump right here, like that. On a falcon, you'll have the beak will come down like this, and it and that extra bit is like this. That's called a tomial tooth, and what they use that for is to break the sever the spine of the birds that they catch. The falcons are bird eaters. The mouth comes right, it, if I draw the eye, here's the eye right here. We draw that eye, the beak or the corner of the mouth comes just in front of the center of the eye, just like that. If I draw, if I draw a line down, you're going to see that that mouth comes to about there. And we're going to draw the bottom, the the lower, the mandible. This is the maxilla. This is the mandible. This is right here. This part right in here. Here, this is called the sear. That's the yellow part that comes up. Now you're going to have the basically the lips of the bird. If birds have lips, come back like that. And then it goes up right here. Now this area, here's that orbital ridge right here, that bony structure that sticks out. This area in here from the eye to where the sear starts, and here I'm going to draw the, the nair, which is the, the uh, nostril. This whole area here is called the lore, L-O-R-E. And there's really very little feathers there. Matter of fact, there are these little tiny hair-like feathers that kind of stick out. Those are called crine, C-R-I-N-E. Those are called crine feathers. But down here, we come down, and remember where the, I was showing you, just like on our jaw, it splits apart, and you get that soft part. Well, that jaw, if you were to see it come you know, underneath, comes back like so. But the feathers start right about here. So these are all feathers that kind of blend in with the rest of the body, and then the bottom of the beak comes in like so. And so then, right where all the, the soft part is, like if you feel your chin right here on the bird, imagine your chin being that mandible, okay? And then right behind your chin where it gets soft, that's where the other feathers will come in, like that. So there's your bird of prey, and then off of here, the feathers come up, they come together. The axis of the eye, the corners of the eye, are tilted, so you get a tilt like that, and if you were to draw, continue that line back, that's how the feathers kind of come back like so, in the eyelids. And they come back, and they create those ear coverts I was talking about, like so. And then depending on the type of bird, the species of bird, you're going to have different shaped feathers coming off the back. Okay, but going back to the head, so there's the beak and profile. Now if we want to turn the, uh, turn the bird the three-quarter and open its mouth, Here's the eye ridge, there's that orbital ridge, there's the orbital ridge here, eye, there's a piece of the eye there, there's the sear coming down. Now I'm going to put the, I'm going to just mark the corner of the mouth right here, I'm just making that as a dot. So the maxilla comes down like this. We're going to have it come all the way back there like that. Okay, so there's the maxilla. And then there's the, the, the nair, the, the sear area. Now, we're going to open that mouth. And that, the, uh, that beak is going to come together. 
and it's got like a little there's that lower that mandible and it's got a little groove right there for it to fit right in with the that the maxilla like so tongue comes down like that and then now remember this that's just where the jaw opening is the jaw actually connects back there back here so this comes all the way back so that's why a bird can actually open its mouth quite really wide like if we if we had uh, if we were looking at them from the side you could a, 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 uh, a bird can open its mouth you know like so Okay, and then this is all soft, so you, you actually see the feathers under here. Like that. Okay. So that's that's how a bird uh, a bird of prey beak works. Okay. If you were to see it underneath, from underneath, it's shaped like this. There's the, that's the lower jawbone, like that. Almost looks like a, uh, a wishbone. All right, there's lesson number two. We got to get back to the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're drawing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we, we're an hour into it? I haven't gotten anywhere. Uh, when you worked at Disney, did you draw any bird uh, bird characters? Uh, I did not. I really wanted to work with Glenn Keane on Marahute from Rescuers Down Under, but he was working in California, and he didn't realize. And I wasn't an animator yet, and he didn't realize I was really into uh, birds at the time. Who so I the, lost uh, my I lost my ability to do that. Um, my own question: Who did the uh, hawk in? Is it a hawk or an eagle? The one in uh, Mulan. That's a falcon. Oh, that's a falcon. Yeah, and that was uh, uh, Press Romanios. Because Press also did uh, the Shan Yu. So he, you know, he animated both. So it was fun. When, we were, when he was designing that character, we actually had falconers come into the studio. Oh, cool. And so we went out and watched them hunt. And what type of uh, falcon is that one? That's was a peregr that? peregrine falcon. Oh, that was a peregrine? It's based on a peregrine falcon, yeah. Gotcha. Peregrine falcon... Uh, holds the record for being the fastest animal on the planet. They can dive at over 240 miles an hour. Matter of fact, they dive so fast that they have, if you look at a, a peregrine falcon's beak, which I have, you have, he has, he has a skull. Yes. Yeah. Here's a peregrine falcon right here. Now you can't see it in the nostril, in the nair, but is that blurry? Uh, try bringing it a little closer. It's blurred out. Pull it's it back. Well, anyway. Well, bring it. Bring it more center because I think it was trying to focus on your face, like block your face somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Um, and you can kind of see that tomial tooth on there too if you look at the beak. Um, they have a, a little growth inside their nostril um, that actually breaks up the air and, and funnels it in to their lungs. Uh, it breaks up the, the speed of that air because when, a, when, a, um, when that falcon dives and it's diving at over 240 miles an hour, that air is being pressed into its nostrils and they've theorized without that little growth there to break up the air the air would inflate their lungs at such a rate it would burst them so it's pretty pretty wild little uh, uh, adaptation that they have so here on the tail you see I've chosen to kind of open the tail up this way just to break up that thrusting action
Facebook question. Do you use the nibs that come with your tablet or do you use different kind? I heard there are softer felt nibs. I seem to be scratching my new Wacom. Thanks, guys. Um, I do have some, I do have felt nibs. They're gray. I don't use them. I used to, I use them on my old Cintiq. This new Cintiq, um, actually the, the glass is slightly, it's got a texture to it. It's slightly etched. And so therefore, I found that I could just use the regular black plastic nibs that come uh, with the Cintiq. And uh, and actually the, the felt tip ones should come with your Cintiq. If you look inside, if you look inside your, your holder, like here, you know, this is the holder for this one, but you might have a different holder, but it, within the holder are more nibs in case you didn't know that. And there should be the felt tip ones in there. Hey Aaron. Why aren't you streaming on Twitch too? Might be interesting for some people to see your stuff there. We're streaming. He is. On, we're we're on Twitch right now. Yeah, uh, we're on Twitch, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Yeah, all uh, the same. Instagram, all the same time, Mary. And Facebook. Yeah. And am I missing one? Nope. Nope. Don't believe so. And uh, I believe on all the other sites except for Facebook, it's all titled Aaron Blaze Art. Yeah, sure. Right? And it's... And Facebook, it's The Art of Aaron Blaze. Yes. So here, I just want to do a solid... I just want to lay this in really solid. Just I'm just laying in a, a base color. Then we'll, we'll vary it up. But I just want to lay something in really quick. Almost like a magic marker. Uh, YouTube question. Have you been to the Reptile Discovery Center in Deland? I'm very interested in checking the place out when things calm down and more open. I have not. I didn't know there was a Reptile Discovery Center in Deland. Oh, yes, I did. It's down, uh, it's down the uh, Speedway Drive there, right? On your way to, De uh, to De uh, De Daytona. I think it's down that way. I think so. International Speedway. International Speedway. Out past the skydive center and all that. What Cintiq is that? It's the 32 inch Pro. 32 inch Pro. Yep. Pro. <laughs> Are you interested in dinosaurs to the extent that you're interested in birds, given their relations? Uh, I find dinosaurs fascinating, yeah. But, um,. Uh, I just, I just know more about existing animals. That's all. I think it, dinosaurs are really fascinating. I love. I would love to uh, understand them a bit more and and do renderings of them and what they might look like. You know, I love. I love taking skulls. Like there's an old. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, saber. Oops. Come on. On this Mac. Oh, I can't find it. I got it. I don't know where it is. I think it got moved. It's in a different location. But I did a saber tooth based on the skull. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, oh, maybe. Skulls. Where did you get your skulls? I uh, get them at, uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. This one. So this one, I, I based it on a, uh, I, I have a skull that I drew over and then drew the cat according to the skull. And, uh, and I wanted it to feel realistic and, uh, and have this kind of classic feel to it. And so that's, that's the image that I came up with, you know, using my knowledge of of big cats the way they exist now and applying that to the skull and I used some of my fur brushes and, and hair brushes and and just really had a good time with it so that was a good time oops there. hey it's Stitch Love hey man and he's got a question question guys uh, how do you manage to get so many different animal subjects so accurately drawn does it require a year-long focus on each animal family? 
or does it rather come naturally as you draw a lot in general? It's both. And it's and you'll also find that as you study more, you're going to find there's a natural rhythm to animals across the board that you start to you start to figure out. And and I think I fake it a lot more than people realize. I don't think my a lot of my drawings are as accurate all the time as people think. Um, and I, you know, I make a lot of mistakes here and there. But, um, but I do try to study them as much as I can. And, and you find, I find that uh, comparative anatomy really helps. So like when I, was, when I was showing the anatomy of a bird and how the legs work, I'm thinking about human legs and I'm thinking about or dog legs and things like that. And you'll find there's there is a there's similarities, and once you understand those similarities and the rhythms, then you can you can adjust them a bit from species to species, and it and that really helps the learning curve. Uh, I don't know if I explained it very clearly, but it, it's over time you just start to you start to understand natural rhythms to the way different anatomy works. When I want to write a story... So it was great talking to you, oh, too, oh, Detlef. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. I just I wanted to say uh, I wanted to say hi to Detlef. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, can, may I? Go for okay. it, man. Go for it. Cool. Uh, when I want <laughs> to write a story, I have lots of ideas crawling on my, on my head that I want to explore. Uh, what can I do to keep my ideas organic so I don't get confused and overwhelmed? Write them down. Write them down. That's how you do it. So he's on the right track because he's you, writing down the ideas. Yeah, like, no. just keep writing them down. That's the best thing you can do that I can think of. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going in and I'm going to add the color where it needs to go. And when you're drawing, do you use uh, clipping masks? No. And I know I probably should because I've had that question on a number of times like why don't you use clipping masks because uh, I never I never learned that way so I just never you do it at least there aren't <laughs> any people like use clipping masks <laughs> you gotta use clipping masks brother 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 you ever met James Gurney I've never met James Gurney we've communicated with each other um, I'm a James Gurney nerd I, 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 I am such a fan of his work and uh, and I geek out when you know I, I geeked out when we communicated with each other. I just I thought it was really cool. Um, he is uh, he's such an amazing artist. I remember going uh, to the Natural History Museum in uh, in Los Angeles and seeing the show of all of his paintings that he did for uh, Dinotopia, and it was just amazing. And I just stood there and stared for hours and hours and hours at all of his, at all of his paintings. He's just an incredible, inspiring artist. And when you watch his, uh, if, if you don't know who he is, if you've seen Dinotopia, he's the artist that created Dinotopia. But he's also got a YouTube channel. And uh, if you've never seen it, I really recommend looking at it because he can break down painting in such a clear, concise, simple way. And it starts out, you know, you can see how his work starts out really messy. And then, uh, but then it comes together. And it, in, in a real logical way. And that's what I find really cool. So he's very inspiring. So look up James Gurney on uh, YouTube. So I'm just going through and I've locked I've uh, locked the layer so that I can't draw outside the uh, what I've already created and uh, so that's going to enable me to <laughs> more <laughs> accurately draw here. Go ahead. Have you bought anything out of Impulse these days? I really need to forget my password so I can't access PayPal or any online store, <laughs> at least for the remaining of the quarantine. 
Yeah, I, I bought a. What have I bought so far? That out of. I bought a uh, French fry cutter, impulsively. French fry cutter. Yeah, potato. You dice it up into French fries. Nice. <laughs> Thought it looked delicious. I'm sure. I'm sure it does look delicious. <laughs> Thought it looked delicious. Thought it looked delicious. Uh, Facebook comment. Hi, Dustin. You look very skeptical today. Very skeptical? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that means. You look what, skeptical. What, what? What is skeptic? What is skeptical? Like you doubt. I doubt. You're doubting. You're doubting Thomas. I'm just not used to a camera in my face. You're the one that wanted it, dude. Oh, you said it was a good idea. I, I was the one that implemented it. <laughs> yes, I thought it was a good idea. More like a talk show, right? Hey. It is. Hey. Hey. <laughs> kind of, I'm kind of like that that second guy in in the late night shows. Oh yeah. Like, uh -huh. um, like what's his name? Uh, like Conan has what's his name? Yeah, I can't remember everyone's names. Jimmy Fallon has has a guy. Um, they everybody has that second guy. The guy. <laughs> I'm the second guy. Hey! YouTube comment, wow, your hair really grew in the past week. <laughs> yeah, my hair actually grows really fast. Yeah, I so need I a, might I might grow back out long again. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I need a I need a rebuzz mine. So you'll notice I'm just all I'm doing right now is adjusting color here and there. I'll do this really quickly. As all my little side anatomy lessons have slowed me down here. Is it better to first learn human anatomy before learning animals, or does it really matter? I do think it matters. I think it helps. Because one of the things that really, really helped me is understanding human anatomy and how we all have the same parts. Every animal, you know, minus jellyfish and insects and things like that, but um, basically any animal with, a, with a, a spine, we basically all have the same parts, whether you're a bat, a bird, a dog, a human, uh, a raccoon, anything, we all have the same parts. And understanding how those parts differ in relation to one another to from species to species is it, it was extremely helpful for me and so understanding human anatomy to begin with and musculature and all that really helped me understand like for instance when I was talking about how a bird flies and understanding those pectoral muscles and how overly developed they are in, in comparison to us it, it really made sense because I understood human anatomy and how those muscles attach so that's the long answer, which is yes, I think it, 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 it's helpful. Especially if you can focus it as a, comp uh, 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 a comparative anatomy. Mar says that I'm probably like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, <laughs> towards the camera. <laughs> How do you determine how saturated a color should be in a drawing? Does it depend only directly in your style? Yeah, I think there's that. Um, I just know that there's very little pure saturated color in what we see every day. Now, obviously, there's a lot in nature, but um, and so I tend to work on the left side of the of the color picker. You know, if you look at the left side of the color picker, that's the gray side. And it's you know, and I'm rarely am I over here in the pure side. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to do like I did with the tail, and that is just go through, and I'm adding, I'm making everything dark. Then I'm going to add the lights, 
after. Of course, I get the ghost images like that. That drives me nuts. Drives me nuts too, eh? She's <laughs> driving me nice, do we? How do you prepare for a drawing? Do you um, believe that eating before uh, plays a part? Like getting your vitamins and nutrition? <laughs> well, I don't think of it as a sporting event. I don't think <laughs> of it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just start drawing when I'm inspired. And, and then when I'm hungry, I eat. <laughs> you definitely need to give your brain fuel of, of something. Come on, turn it off. There we go. Turn it off! Turn it off! <laughs> oh shoot, I didn't, look at that. I didn't draw out the rest. Oops. Oops. Do you prefer using more warm or cold colors? It really depends on the image. Uh, do you use clipping masks? <laughs> Are you being serious? <laughs> you, you know you asked that one, right? Oh yeah, but it's for the latecomers. Oh, no, I don't use clipping masks. <laughs> okay, so there... Whoops. Knock that back up. So there, I've, I've laid in just the basically the, the dark colors, and notice that I'm I'm really just drawing. Uh, I'm not getting in and drawing every feather. And this is obviously we're not going to be able to take this much more than just a sketch today, uh, because of some of the other side lessons. But um, and now what I want to do is start adding some of these lighter. Markings. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Do you have a creative routine or a scheduled block uh, for things like practicing life drawing? I work full time and have uh, four kids, and I'm going to school online uh, for illustration. Wow. I found that trying to take a sketchbook with me wherever I go uh, to help stay focused. Yes, that really helps. Um, I don't do it as often as I should uh, take a sketchbook with me, but uh, it's a great practice to to do, and I recommend it, especially if you're just learning. I used to. Why don't you use uh, click and mess? Are they bad or something? No, I just never used them. <laughs> <laughs> I just never used them. I don't. I. It's not something I. I learned. So I've learned other ways. YouTube comment. There should be a marquee scrolling across the top with answers to the FAQs. Aaron's system specs are such. He's using Photoshop. He loves bears and big cats. He never met Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. There. There should be like you know how there's a commercial in certain uh, live streams like at certain points there should be one of like a video of, ju of just you like looking at the camera uh, like my I've never done man. this I don't use this I use this as as the camera gets closer and closer to your face uh -huh. <laughs> and Nolan Nolan Taylor said that Dustin Dustin Blaze is the dude of dudes. <laughs> Legend says he once spent a year in silence just to better understand the sound of a whisper. <laughs> Which is a very Preach. nice Knight's Tale reference. There's that um, movie with uh, yeah. Heath Ledger. Yeah, when he's introducing him. Yeah. I haven't watched that movie in so long. YouTube, two questions. How do you find detail? How do you how do you do find details when working from your shoulder? I'm inking and can't imagine using my shoulder. Also, how would a person find a client or business? Uh, when I'm doing fine detail, I'm not drawing from the shoulder. So there you go. So that's easy. And then to find a client or business, um, 
there's a whole process there. I mean, first, first of all, nowadays, social media is a huge part of an artist's uh, business. You know, that's how people are, are found a lot of times now. So having a social media presence, whether it's Instagram or, or uh, uh, DeviantArt, you know, some of these other um, websites, is super important. Did uh, Photoshop manage to fix the bug, or is it still there? I, I actually changed, I'm using my old Photoshop. Oh, the that old one? That fixed the bug, yeah. I'm using Photoshop 19, yeah, 2000, 2019. Um, but since then, I'm uh, my computer, the new computer I'm using is Catalina. So I might be able to, uh, the operating system is Catalina. So I um, might be able to, uh, it might work, I'm not sure. It just might work. So I'm just getting in the, the feather mockings. Good morning, Dustin and Aaron. Good morning. Uh, technical question. Uh, you must generate huge amounts of video data. Uh, how do you store all of it? We have a uh, Dropbox account uh, that's unlimited. Yeah, we have a uh, unlimited Dropbox, but uh, internally on our uh, on our hardware, uh, like I have large amounts of uh, storage in my in my computer, but I'm still getting external storage uh, soon. And Dad uses a very very big storage. Uh, external drive. Yeah, the, well, yeah, but I don't store everything there. But I do have a Drobo that's got 14 terabytes of storage on it. Yeah. But I don't. I don't. Uh, you only store like all the stuff that you need. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty much the same way, but um, a lot of the stuff that I'm needing to save is all the new 4K videos for the Birds of Prey. Yeah. <laughs> and and the amount of videos we've done already has filled up our my internal storage near to the brim so I was like yeah I need I need to get external so I got external on the way <laughs> and I think the one that we got order on the way is a 24 terabyte storage yeah YouTube question Aaron is your fundamentals of animation really free I saw it said with zero dollars <laughs> it is really free Yeah, hey. I want everyone during the quarantine. I want everybody learning. Did Walt Disney use clipping masks back then? <laughs> Came back in the day. Is that a Nolan Taylor question? No, it's a Mariana Garcia. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Nolan though did. It's a pioneer of moose studies for National Geographic. Howdy, dear, bud. <laughs> so I'm slowly, you know, so once again, notice how I'm not drawing in every feather, but I'm just basically kind of trying to get the markings in. Apart from uh, writing the ideas down, as you previously answered, uh, would it also be helpful to do some scribble drawing of those of those ideas as well? Sure. I do that all the time. You know, if, if I come up with a visual for a, a story that I'm writing, um, that's a big part of of what we do is getting those. You know, whether it's a character look or a, a setting. Uh, what brand is best for external storage? Um, I don't know. Uh, Seagate, I think. I used to use a lot of Seagate. Uh, Samsung has really good solid state storage. Uh, as far as like external drives in general, like the like the actual big big external towers, I don't know. And if you're if you're looking for something like smaller, more portable, um, the Samsung like two terabyte ones are good. They're on the pricier end, but they're very very fast. 
because they're solid state. Oh, Dustin, FYI, your new storage drive should be there on the 11th. The 11th. Awesome. That's from Nick. Nick Thank Nick, you, Nick. Nick, 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 Birch. You love it. That is... Is that Thursday? No. That is Thursday. That is Thursday. That is the day your grandfather gets the hell out. Oh, is he leaving? Yes. Aww. My father is leaving back to the North Country for a few months. He leaves. He comes down and visits me, stays with me every year for about three or four months, and then goes back for about three months, and then comes back and stays with me for three or four months, <laughs> then goes back for three months. That's why it's, we built I, it. I'm sensing a pattern here. Yes, that's why we built him that awesome little house in the backyard, which is... Now Nick's house, for when he comes here. Early, no more hotel. No, we don't have to put him in a hotel anymore. I built an extra house. Nice. At least when Paul Marshall is not around. Exactly. Furnished it. 82 inch TV. <laughs> All right, so we're getting there. <laughs> the quote-unquote new bedroom is really an external drive, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just quickly getting these markings in. Once again, I would more call this a, this image that we're going to have. It's more of a sketch. How often do you draw from imagination? Like what artists or... I, uh, I, pr I probably draw from imagination most of the time. I'll use reference like... Rarely do I sit down and copy an image like I'm doing today. Um, even if I'm using, a, using reference heavily, I'll change it quite a bit. Uh, to learn animation, uh, do you think it's best to start with uh, traditional and then moving to digital? No. I think learning digital right now, um, now if you're talking about hand-drawn digital, yeah, I think it's fine just to go right into hand-drawn digital. If you meant, uh, I'm trying to understand if you mean just drawing traditionally on paper. Um, I don't think it's important to draw on paper anymore. I think it's wonderful and it's nice to have but it's just not how it's done anymore. And I personally, to be honest with you, and it's almost blasphemous to say this, <laughs> I um, I prefer animating digitally now because I can get my animation done and adjusted so much quicker. Will there be an option to not download the huge 4K videos and just download them as 1080p? I don't know. Nick, you can stream them. Yeah, because they are going to be big, big files. Very big files. And this is a big course. Oh my gosh. I've already yeah. covered 13 birds. And they're We've only done the head portion so far, though. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, what, two, what was it, two or three out of those 13 are not three parts. They're all, like, only, like, three of them are one, uh, each are, like, one long, like, hour and a half long video. Yeah. But all the other ones are, like, three separate parts each. So, red-shouldered hawks have these markings on their on their chest. These lines called vermicula vermaculations. I forgot that word the other day, and I went on <laughs> went on Facebook and said, "Hey, to my bird friends out there that know what I'm talking about, what are all the squiggly lines on ducks and and whatnot?" I came back with vermaculation. 
I actually knew it at one time. I just couldn't remember it. Dustin, can't wait for your next photo pack. I can't wait either. <laughs> I've, I got a whole bunch of new photos taken in the past couple of weeks. I have. I need to reorganize them, see if I have any more possible packs that I can, that I can might make. You okay? Uh -huh. Having a little trouble there? Yes, I'm having I'm early morning troubles. <laughs> uh, did you get uh, Pop Marshall's uh, test results? Test results? Like, was he tested for something recently? No. no. Are you asking? I'm, uh, well, Martin is asking, did you get Marshall's test results? Oh, for his uh, COVID. They, they said he didn't have it, but they were just checking for active virus. I still think he had had it, but I think the, the virus is gone. Because I've never seen him as sick as he was, and he couldn't breathe. And uh, I've just, I came so close to taking him to the hospital, but he, he didn't want to go. But um, I think uh, he had it, but uh, the active virus is gone. I'd love for him to get an antibody test. Because I'll tell you, I thought he was, I kept checking on him to make sure he was still alive. I kept walking, you know, because he was just a mess. <laughs> Martin's like, I don't, have, I don't have a 4K monitor, so it would be nice to have smaller files on my computer, please. Nick, do the thing and give us the option to download 1080p. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll make I, I'm sure we can export them that way. Oh, yeah. Sure. Instagram question: When starting most of your drawings, do you fee, do you free sketch or trace your reference photo, or do you sketch from your imagination? Both. I I, I don't I never I never uh, trace. No, I never do that. But I do sketch from my imagination, or I free sketch. Dustin, what future photo packs will you create with what animals? Um. I think one of my few, one of my next future goals is Cuter. a vulture pack. I don't think anyone's gonna buy that. I don't know uh, of turkey and black vultures. Um, so there's that possibility. Uh, then there's also another one of like for Oops. grackles, uh, red winged blackbirds, the ma uh, males because they don't have a whole lot of females at the moment. Um, among a few others, uh, little blue heron. Uh, other than that, uh, is still up in the air on what on what I have available. But those are like the right up there. So, then so I might make like a second um, Florida uh, Florida marsh bird pack uh, for all that because that's where a lot of them are uh, are seen in our marshes. So, yeah, we'll just see what happens. And there you go. There you go. I just don't know that there's a lot of people clamoring to draw vultures, is what I meant. Yeah. Although you but got some really cool photos of them. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that would be interested in and vultures. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, I do. There's always an interest in something. Is this a falcon, hawk, or eagle, and what kind? This is a red-shouldered hawk. Um, that's another thing. This is um, what we call a buteo, B-U-T-E-O, and in Europe, these types of hawks, it's a family of hawks, they're more broad-winged, heavier-bodied. Um, in Europe, they're called buzzards. Now, here in the United States, we think of a buzzard as a vulture. But in actuality, a buzzard is a type of hawk. It's a budio, which is a, more of a broad-winged, soaring hawk, heavier-bodied. The true hawks, the acipiters, the true hawks are uh, more bird-eating hawks, goshawks, cooper's hawks, those types of birds. 
Furious Nova on Instagram wrote, I, lo I love vultures, underrated beauties. Oh, I, I'm, and I, I do too. I just, uh, most people, I would, I would assume, maybe uh, I shouldn't assume, because it only makes an ass out of you and me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just thought most people would probably rather draw something else. Anger to the audience, I always say. <laughs> um, so I've got some rough markings in. There's our there's our buzzard flying. This is a buzzard. Red-shouldered hawk. So let's lay in some uh, shadows, adding a layer and multiplying. I want to. I'm going to put in my own lighting. So I want this head to um, pop a little bit. I'm going to get some nice dark shadows here. Cindy Bolden on Facebook says, "I I buy the vulture pack. Birds are my thing." That's awesome. I'd rather be proved wrong. <laughs> Are you drawing with uh, tilt sensitivity in addition to pressure sensitivity? Not so much. No, not really any tilt sen not Not on this brush, anyway. Uh, ooh. Declef says, uh, we should go to Montana to photograph bison uh, for your reference pack, Dustin. I'm going to go there at some point uh, for my own reference photos. Yes. That would be awesome. Uh if you ever do, whatever you do plan on going out there, let me know and we can plan it out. That would be awesome to do. I would be totally down for that. Yeah, you. Uh, it's, it's been uh, just a over a year since we were there last. Yeah, in fact, the last time I went was when I first got started into wildlife photography. So, it would be really cool to go out there with the, with the knowledge and the, and the stuff that I have now just to see how much progression I've made since then. Yeah. Uh, has any of your art gone into a book? I'm interested in becoming an illustrator. I've illustrated for books in the past. Um, I don't have a book of my, my work, although we're working on it. But I've, done, I've done quite a bit sorry. of illustrations. Go ahead. Sorry, Dustin. All right. Uh, what are your favorite artists that inspire you? Um, I've got classic artists that really inspire me. John Singer Sargent, Joaquin Soroya, um, Shishkin, I can't remember his first name, Russian painter, landscape painter. Um, lots of great, great artists. Uh, then there's animal artists out there that inspire me. There's a lot of young, young artists today that inspire me. You know, one, probably one of my favorite painters living today. Um, oh no, now I, I just completely brain farted it. Um, oh, oh my gosh. Well, forget it. I lost it. I know I know his name any other day, but today I can't remember it. Hey Vanya, just dropped in on your stream. Cool to have your screen as well, Dustin. Thank you. It's a little weird. What's weird? Oh, uh, just having my own own screen up here too. You love it. I I do, but I'm worried I'm not looking to the audience enough. Uh, I don't have a drawing tablet yet. Uh, I don't have a drawing tablet yet. I'm studying animation. And is my current way of learning effectively on paper? I have only done one digital artwork, but I drew it on paper and scanned it and used my mouse in Photoshop Pen Tool. Was that a it's, question? It's, yeah, I have a hard time understanding where the question begins. <laughs> but I think what he's asking is, like, he's drawing on, he's drawing on paper first, but then scanning it digitally and 
and he's asking if this is like an effective way to learn art. Oh yeah, a lot of people do that. And he's and he's using a mouse to draw uh, to draw on Photoshop. No, get rid of the mouse. <laughs> no, get rid of the mouse. Get a tablet. Mouse is no no. no. <laughs> Don't use a mouse. James Gurney is judging a Proko Challenge contest for Stan uh, uh, Prokopenko this week. That hack. <laughs> Do you think it might be cool to collaborate in that way with Stan? I never want to talk to Stan ever again. <laughs> I think it would be awesome. What about a dinosaur photo pack? Nick says, I think it would really sell well. <laughs> yeah, go out and get a dinosaur photo pack. YouTube comment. I bought a Cintiq 22 and it will be the first time I will have a display tablet. I've been buying your courses while going through my first year of animation at university. I can't wait to get started. That is awesome. You're going to love it. You'll, you'll never go back. And the person we talked about with um, drawing with, uh, with mouse uh, for Photoshop and all that, we didn't say that you have to go digital to draw any of any of this. It's good to go traditional. It's just when you do go digital, it's a lot harder to use a mouse. Yeah, it's a just a lot harder to use a mouse. Yeah, it's just it's, it's it, yeah, to me it's like using a screwdriver as a hammer. Yeah. It's just not it's not what a mouse is designed for. Yeah, because he um, the person that asked that question re rewrote rewrote it said and he wrote I have only I've only done one digital artwork, but I drew it on on paper and scanned it. Use my uh, mouse in Photoshop Pen Tool. Now, oh no! I you you said it's better to go digital, and I'm currently on Human Anatomy course. Uh, no drawing tablet yet. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean it's tough, but and it's it's expensive to get into the digital world. That I get. Um, but you know, there, there's certain tools that you have to have. You know, like in scuba diving. You know. You gotta have a tank, you know, when you scuba dive. And to me, you know, working digitally, you've gotta have some kind of tablet. That's you can't use a mouse. But if you want to just get into art in general, you can start. You can easily start with a paper and pencil, of course, and work your way with that until you can uh, uh, afford to go digital with a tablet, whether if it's with the walk of one or with an iPad but then after that then you can transition into the digital world right this is all about getting, getting hey the they're here hey how's it going huh we are we live are? streaming okay. you're talking to the world right now hey everybody <laughs> hello world So here I'm painting in some light. I want to get a little motion to the wings, a little action. A uh, question. Yes? With the dark of the beak against the dark of the wing, I'm losing sight of the bird's beak. Yep. Well, uh, I haven't gotten to it yet because I will be popping it out. I've had this problem with things I work on. How, uh, how do you fix this when it happens to your work? Well, you'll be showing it in a minute. Yeah, right? rim lighting. And rim so I'm going to give it some rim lighting, which I haven't done yet. And all of that will reveal itself. We answered this question last stream, but <laughs> could you draw a quokka one day? <laughs> a quokka! A quokka! Happiest animal on earth. How can you say no to that? Quokka kicking. 
Let's go Poker Kicking. Poker Kicking. <laughs> Uh, do you have any uh, digital art do's and don'ts? Uh, don't use a mouse. Don't use a mouse. <laughs> have you ever been to Scotland? Oh no. I have not, but I would love to go to Scotland. Don't worry, it's not the whole voice recognition <laughs> technology thing. In a left in Scotland. <laughs> you mean the thing you just did? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, what I'm doing now is just adding the real bright highlight areas, and I'm going to also add Have you been to Scotland? Scotland! Scotland! No. You've been to Ireland? I've been to Ireland. Bonnie Ireland. Freedom! What? Freedom! What? Was that your best brave art? Yeah. Freedom! How often do you uh, live stream? Uh, we twice watch, a week. Yeah, twice a week. On Tuesday mornings and Friday afternoons in Eastern Standard Time, EST. So today, uh, on Tuesdays, it's 9 a.m. EST or Eastern Standard Time, and Fridays ES is. EST? EST. Um, and Fridays is at uh, 1 o'clock, 1, yep. 1 p.m. Yep. EST. Uh, EST. For a that I was about to say noon, but I was like, no, that's when we get get prepped. Uh, personally, what's your least favorite form of art to do? I'm struggling big time with colored pencils. Um, I actually love colored pencils. That's the first thing I learned when I was young was colored pencil. Um, least favorite. Is that? Sorry. Hey guys. Me, me, Marshall. Hi. Hey, Marshall, come say hi. Vedanta, come say uh, hi. Uh, okay, we got groceries. So just a minute. Oh, they got groceries. Good cover. So here, what I'm doing is getting that beak to stand out a little bit better. See? Okay. Getting the beak to stand out. Okay. Yeah, see. You're gonna go far, you're gonna go far. Especially when you meet Walt Disney. <laughs> uh, Aaron. Yes? Do I need to put in my debit or credit card when getting the free courses? I don't think so. But that's a that's a question for Nick, 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 Birch. Nick, answer the thing. I think you have to put your email in. Because we want to know where you are. Well, hello world. Hello. 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 You can't see me, can you? I'm just a, I'm just a moving curtain. <laughs> How's it going? It's going, it's going well, eh? Hey. How's well. it going with you, eh? Going pretty well. Where's Marshall? Uh, he went around back. He um, had an issue with his prescription. Is he uh, is he healthy? He's healthy. They took blood work. He just came back from the doctor. My father's 81 this year, and he's still out there building. Like he's crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. He's the healthiest 80 year old I've ever seen. The only thing is he's, he can't see, so I got to be his eyes. But my father is incredibly healthy. And he drinks two vodkas every night. <laughs> Cranberry vodkas. Yep. Sometimes three. My father and I have still got, we still uh, kind of imbibe, even though he's 80, we still have occasionally where we got to stagger off together. It's pretty funny. <laughs> we have a good time together, my father and I. 
Hey, Erica Bay. Uh, love the discount available for TV Paint with my annual membership. Yes. Have you ever thought uh, or tried working with Wacom for discount uh, for your subscribers uh, for their products uh, on their website? We, um, we have, and it's something that we're still trying to work out. So, now you can see as we refine, that's again, it's, it's feeling more like a sketch. You know, but I kind of like it. I'm liking the feel, you yeah. know. It's a little study. What I'm doing is just kind of going in and shoring, oops, I'm on the wrong layer, shoring things up. Hitting details. Hi, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? Uh, when you come up with the idea of a drawing and you're just starting to draw it, uh, do you have the whole finished piece in your mind? No. Or do you just have some basic idea that evolves during the drawing process? Yeah, I have a basic, sometimes, sometimes more than others, uh, but usually it's a notion, and then I it evolves as I'm creating it. What's the discount on TV paint with the annual membership? Um, it's, I think it's 30% discount. It's substantial. Can't remember. Big. Exactly. It's, it's huge. Ginormous. Are you working with layers? And if so, yes. how many? And what do you use them for? Well, I have a layer that I do shadows. I have a layer that's, that's uh, local color, which is the color of an object when it's not lit or, or in shadow. I have a layer for light. I have a layer for reflected light. So like this, what I'm doing now is its own layer, what I'm creating right now. Have you ever tried animating on, on Photoshop? No. Photoshop to me is not made for, for that, not for the type of animation that I do. Um, actually, I take it back, I have tried. My brother was doing it and, and was trying to sh explain it to me and I hated it. <laughs> it was so, un, uh, 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 it was just unwieldy. I couldn't figure it out. Is that how I would try this? Animates? No, he he actually works on on uh, Calipig on, now. On what? Oh yeah, I did draw a quokka for the live stream for Australian fire fire relief. That's right, I did. Oh. Little happy quokka. We were talking about that last night. That really worked out. We were able to donate some some good money for that. We were talking about our donations last night. Nice. 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 YouTube question. How are you doing? Aaron, have you watched Lion King Simba's Pride already? You said in an earlier stream that you never saw it. Hope you're doing okay. Love's from Holland. Uh, no, I haven't seen it. And uh, I wasn't crazy about the way it looked, and so I just haven't, I haven't looked at it. I haven't watched it. <laughs> Your family art adventure reality show that we talked about recently ought to be on National Geographic. I think it would be really cool. So I want to reflect a little bit of the sky color into some of these lighter feathers. So that's what I'm doing right there. Maybe get a little bit in here as well. 
very pastel-y looking, this, this image. There's a lot of texture coming through. Can you give any tips on how to start an animal drawing? Like Look for the big shapes. Look for those big shapes. That's how you start. Look for the big shapes. Look for the rhythm. Start with a gesture. You know, for instance, if I'm... There we go. I'm liking that. Okay. Um, let me put all this into a folder. Let's turn off that folder. Let's say I want to draw a big cat. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find that... I want to find that gesture, right? So let's say, uh, let's see what I've got here. You know, I want to find the gesture like so. And I think of it, I break it up. Whoops, there we go. I break it up into its different parts. You know, I think of the head here. Think of the neck, like so. Think of the fore, the the front shoulders and uh, legs, and I think of the trunk of the body, right here. So I'm thinking of anatomy as well. Maybe he's coming down the tree. Like so. So I get that gesture in like that first. And then, then you can start working out your details. But you can't get the gesture in accurately until you've done your homework. You've got to do your homework on understanding that anatomy, right? We got a tree coming down. that okay so then then it's time to refine so what would I do there so then it's I'm finding details I come in and find details like so in the drawing Maybe I'm drawing, you know, a, a cat with markings on it. And this is the time where I would maybe start adding the spots, you know, or if I'm drawing a tiger, I would add the stripes. But I'm always thinking about that anatomy. So I just work out the details like that. And so ultimately, this is, you know, you start with that gesture and you want to think about the anatomy while you're doing that. There you go. Back to our bird. There's a Back bird. Back to our regular, regular sketch of poo, man. Uh, Twitch question. I'm working right now on a portfolio so I can go to university for design and I feel like I don't really get anywhere right now. Do you have tips on how to be more productive while working on difficult tasks? It's practice. Keep in mind, you're going to university to learn what you're talking about. So you don't have to know it yet. You just have to be willing to learn. Okay, remember that. That's one of the things I find with young people now nowadays is that they feel like they have to know it before they've even been taught it. And that's why you're going to university. You're going there to be taught it. So don't worry if you don't know it yet. Just be willing to learn. Be willing to work hard. And you'll be okay. Hey, Aaron. I just wanted to say that the people in Brazil love your work. You're amazing. Thank you. I love Brazil. 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 I've only been to Sao Paulo. Been to Sao Paulo probably four times. I love it. 
I am a YouTube animator, and most of the time I have trouble drawing poses. Uh, do you have any tips? Uh, that once again, it's you know understanding anatomy. That's extremely important. If you understand the anatomy, then then especially for animation, you want to re remember your language is drawing. So the better at drawing you can be, draftsmanship, the better animator you're going to be. And so it's it's getting. It's understanding that that language, getting to understand that language, which is going to help you. And so, the more you do it, the better off you are. Aaron, I've been practicing drawing animals a lot lately. The result with reference isn't bad, but without reference, the result looked pretty weird. What should I do? <laughs> you know, just keep going. I know it's tough. But you'll learn. It just the reason they're weird is that you just haven't you haven't picked it all up yet. And try to draw from life as much as you can. Drawing from reference is okay, but you're not going to learn as much as you will if you draw from life or video. Draw from video if you can't find something from life, because that really helps. Do you ever draw humans? I draw humans a fair amount, yes. Yes, yes I do. And here, what I want to do is go a little bit darker. We're going to call this one done here in just a minute. Are you sure about that? No, you know how it goes. Yep. There's always going to be one more thing. I want to get a little darker in the back rock, so I'll just do it as an overlay. Multiply. <laughs> enhance. <laughs> Remember that? En oh, yeah. <laughs> enhance. Enhance. We, 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 can't in, we, can't, we can't just that, enhance. That's, that's, that's not a thing. That's not a real thing. That's not a thing. I can at least sharpen the car contrast. <laughs> and it gets perfectly sharpened. <laughs> and, and it gets perfectly sharpened. <laughs> and lower the contrast. <laughs> We were just talking about uh, Space, Space Force, Force. The, the new show on Netflix. Is it Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Yeah. It is so funny. Steve Carell is awesome. Mother fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> yeah, so I got his head to pop a little bit better. Which is, that's the goal, right? Yeah, it's the goal, eh? There. Uh, how can I tell if painting is my thing? I'm struggling to choose between programming and a painting career. I'm sorry <laughs> to laugh, but that, those couldn't be any more opposite. The, what, what, what was the first? Programming, programming. And, and painting as a career. Programming or painting? If you love painting, then that's your thing. You don't have to be great at it, You got because painting is a lifetime of learning. You might make more money right off the bat as a programmer, but I'm always a big advocate of not going for the dollar. Go for the thing that makes you happy, the dollar will follow. And that's always been true for me. Now, so it's, it really does come down to whatever makes you happy. Happy. <laughs> Can happy. you draw some clouds too, please? We already drew some clouds in there. That's what those dark spots are in the back, right? <laughs> oh, the clock? No, yeah. that's just blue sky. That's blue sky, man. But what about all that? Those, all that white stuff. Trees? What's that? What about all that white stuff? That gray? That gray stuff? No, that's oh, it's gray on there. It's blue. Well, there's. It's blue sky, man. Well, it looks like there's gray, gray spots like clouds. Oh, that's just where I didn't draw. Huh. I'm trying to make it look sketchy. Sketchy. You know, sketchy. They kind of look like gray clouds to me. You kind of look like a gray cloud. Your face looks like a gray cloud. I know. Especially with that with that goatee going, got rock in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna call this one done. Are you sure no. about that? Yeah, it's my sketch. 
I'll it's my sketch and I'll cry if I want to. <laughs> I wonder how much uh, should I work on the anatomy of an animal before starting to draw the animal. Till it, huh? Oh, how much should I study, study it? You mean? Yeah, study and uh, understand the anatomy before drawing it. I, you know, I think you, you can do them both at the same time because I do think you make um, you make discoveries as you're drawing and studying at the same time and, and, and drawing as you learn it uh, embeds it into your brain better I think so I would actually do both do both I do both I do both I do both <laughs> there we go there, there is our <laughs> red shouldered hawk Aaron, Aaron is saying clouds? That's just spots that I didn't draw. <laughs> there. Bingo. Bingo. What is so name? there is our. Yeah. YouTube, uh, can you tell me the size animation paper you use? I have an exact. Animation disc that you all have the same one that I have. I use 16 field. 16 That's the size field. paper I use. 16 field. Simple enough. Yep. On Creature Art Teacher, are there any tutorials, lessons for animation, animation, lip syncing for animals? Yes. In my acting for animation course, I go over lip sync. Yep. Look at that. I'm doing one more thing. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> There's always one more thing. There's always. <laughs> There's always one more thing. There's always one more thing. The force will be with you. Always. There will always be something with you. Nick always. says, I disagree. Programming and art are very similar thought processes. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, boy. There is a great book called Hackers and Painters by a guy that has an MFA in fine art and also helped found Yahoo. The day-to-day uh, the -day job of what you do is different, but I have found that the mindset of those that do each are surprisingly similar. Actually, I agree with you, Nick, um, because especially from the problem-solving problem aspect of it, because both of both artists and programmers are, in, in a sense, problem solvers, and you got to be creative in the way that you approach something. And I... And I, I I find that, uh, yeah, so I, you know, I kind of just jumped the gun when I was saying that they're opposite because on the surface they really do seem opposite, but they, um, they, uh, they really do, there are a lot of similarities, I agree. It's all problem solving. Question. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, bud? Uh, I know you always do only one more thing, but in general, how do you feel that, uh, quote, this painting is done, I can stop now? Um, it's when you kind of just don't know what else to do. You know, I could sit here and just noodle at it all day long, but you really just go, you know what, I don't need to. It, it has an, a, it's a complete, it's a feeling, I guess, I don't know, but it just has that, you get that feeling. Feel. That's it. I don't know what else to say. Mm -hmm. You know? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Vern? You know what I'm saying, Vern? But anyway, having... so there we go. There's our there is our red shouldered hawk based on a photograph by Dustin Blazinski. Here the original. Here comes the original. Oh bam. Oh bam. Oh. There's the original. So you can see how I've changed the lighting. Let me bring this up. You can see I changed the lighting. I changed, you know, quite a few things. That's what you have that right as an artist. You can change things around. You can make things brighter, lighter, darker. Do whatever you want in order to get something to read more. And that's what I tried to do here today to get a little better sense of light and. Uh, change the tail position um, you know little things like that these are all things that uh, 
really help with a uh, with an image. All right, so there you go. Red shouldered hawk. Sweet. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that today. I certainly did. And uh, we will get back together again on Friday at 1 p.m. Remember, go to my website, creatureartteacher.com, and you're going to find a lot of great deals there. My animation course is free, absolutely free. We've got $1 courses. We've got $1 Photoshop brush packs, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And it's really, I've got people that are saying, hey, man, I just loaded up on a whole bunch of tutorials, and I just spent four bucks. Five bucks. Five bucks. Ten bucks. Whatever. Ten bucks. You're gonna you're gonna Deep. you're gonna do all right. And the whole goal here is, you know, we really want you guys to be learning during this whole uh, COVID. Oh, I gotta do one more thing here. <laughs> during this whole COVID thing. <laughs> and uh, you know, our goal is to uh, educate. I want people to uh, be educated um, in art, in life, in everything. Uh, education is power knowledge is power and uh, when you have that knowledge um, it, whether it's power to get a job power to debate power to do the right thing all of that that's all uh, knowledge is, is, is the basis of all of that and so and we're definitely in a time where knowledge is power the more knowledge you've got especially in these times uh, the better off you're going to be and uh, so, be safe. Um, Black Lives Matter, 100%. Support it. Um, get out and do the right thing. Use your art to make a statement. And uh, even if it's hard, even if not everyone agrees with you, do what you feel is right. Use your art to change the world. You can do it. That's what we. That's what we're meant to do as artists. So get out there and. and uh, do what you can, and I will see you on Friday. So, go out, put some beauty back into the world, and I'll talk to you then. Bye. And hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. If you guys are interested in any wildlife photography, uh, you can really check me go over to my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze and take a look at my wildlife photos there. And if any, any guys uh, that are new are also looking for any reference packs for, for some wildlife, uh, you can go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com for my 600 plus photo reference bundle, which is all based in marshes. So you get uh, North American river otters, you get North American gators, common egrets, uh, great blue herons, among many other birds. And there's six hundred and fifty photos of those on creatureartteacher.com so you can go check that all those out so once again thank you guys so much and we'll see you guys friday and until then cowboy bebop see ya